we, we don't tend to forget things from 20 years ago, but two days ago yeah, we forget, we right? Forget what I did so yesterday. So that's why relationship with Christ and uh, that deep personal relationship is so very important. Amen. Well, hi everybody. Hello everyone. Yeah, welcome once again to Cloud Church TV. Have we got an amazing word for you today? Just let us introduce ourselves. This is Herrick. Hello, I'm Eric and it's Blood to Apologetics. And I'm Gareth. Nice to meet you. Would you join us in prayer? Would you bow your heads? Would you lift those holy hands if you can and join us and let the holy anointing of God come upon you and stir up the holy the holy of holies within your heart and allow God to work through you as you prepare your heart for this short Bible study but it will be life impacting. Our lives have been transformed by the word and we want your lives to be transformed by the word so please do join us in prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for oh, your goodness yes. and We your glorify grace. you, Father. And thank you, Lord, we for just the opportunity thank you for each and every life, Father God. And look at your word and examine your word. We just thank you for each and every life. Just touch take them. It in and a special receive holy anointing and touch, Father God. And transformed by your word. Father, forgive us for all of our sins. Wash us clean. Wash us snow with the blood of Jesus. It will never pass away. Oh, Heavenly Father. It has power we ask, Father and it God, has that you reveal that can only to to us that you will give us all revelation, Father God. Your goodness, you will remove the, the, the scales from our eyes and the stops from our ears, so that we can clearly see and hear what you want Amen. to speak yes, to Lord. us, Father God. And Father, let us not put any of our own emotions or our own philosophy into it, Father God. But let us rightly you divide your word, truth, Father God. God. Let us share this word in truth and in spirit, Father, Amen. to edify the body of Christ. That's right. Father, Amen. we love you and we praise you. We praise in you. the glorious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. So, Amen. how's life treating you? Um, yeah, I've had a good week, a productive week, and quite a reasonably busy week. So, yeah, I'm very blessed and happy. To be here again. Yeah, let me just move this arm up there. Right. Okay. Uh, 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 there we yeah. go. Just because uh, I have to rest on <laughs> the arm of Eric's chair, I'd sooner rest on his shoulder like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We've got to support each other, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Amen. So, uh, you feel comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable now. Good, good. Yeah. You I know, I've set, I've set this camera up so. We're basically the same height, but actually Eric's like six and a half foot, right? You're very, very tall. Yeah. So, you know, he's a tall guy. You know, he, he might look smaller on the camera, but he is actually taller than me. So I have to alter his chair. No, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> yeah. So how is God working in your life? And well, what's, uh, what's been happening, basically? Tell, well, tell our, um, our followers. Well, actually, on, on Saturday, I went into Manchester to do some filming. But also, I came across a couple of Muslims on their stall, and I got chatting to them. And, and what uh, happened? Oh, they were, they were very pleasant. They were very easygoing. But they have um, a, a, what's called a Dawa script. What's a, that? Which means that they have in mind the questions and the conversation they want to have. And so when I was talking to them, they were sticking to their Dawa script and I was correcting them from what I know of the Quran and what I know of the Bible. And I found that when they realised that I knew parts of the Quran and the Bible, they didn't really want to talk to me anymore no. because they thought, um, because they felt vulnerable and they, they were trying to say, OK, goodbye now. Uh, we don't want to talk to you because you know too much. Yeah, yeah. And that's the impression I got. So right. they were trying to get rid of me once I knew their, their script and I knew their Quran and the Bible. But they, that brings us to today's scripture, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it does, yeah. So you want to, uh, we're going to be reading today from 
Colossians. Is that how you say it? How do you say it? With it's the... like a Colossians or Colossians. Yeah, yeah. Colossians, so everybody yeah. pronounces it yeah. different. I say Colossians. Yeah. Right? Chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. So get your Bibles out. Yeah. This is a really powerful, impacted word. And you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be built up with it. And you're going to get clarity on what it actually means. So it is Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So if you read verse 6 and I'll read verse 7. I'm reading from the New King James Version, but you can read any version you want and it's pretty, it will be similar. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Amen. So it's only two two verses and two verses which are very very powerful and we're going to go little by little or word by word to give us a deeper understanding we're going to go deeper into god's Amen. word right Amen. Yeah. and so um, yeah, we we'll so start in verse six yeah. yeah as you therefore have received christ jesus the lord so walk in him have you received jesus christ as your lord and your Saviour? Have you repented of your sin and acknowledged that he died for you on the cross for your sins and made him Lord of your life? He is Lord anyway, regardless of whether you have or not, but have you made him Lord personally for yourselves? Have you had your sins personally forgiven by Jesus on the cross? Yeah, and have you been set free? by Jesus because he is the, the way, the truth and the life Amen. and when you get the truth you cannot unget the truth that's the See, thing Amen. right yeah. so once you've had the revelation of the truth of Jesus Christ that builds up your faith and then you can move along to what Eric was saying about receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour and that means to be the Lord of all aspects of your life, of every aspect of your life, Amen. making him number one in your life. Jesus himself says, you must be born again. Yeah. And when he was saying that, he was talking to Nicodemus, who was a Jewish ruler, a religious high ruler in uh, the synagogue. And he came to Jesus at night and said, we know he, these miracles have got to be of God, because no one can do these things without God and Jesus said to him you must be born again yeah and, so and that's what's happened to us too we've been transformed by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior yeah and um, that, that that saying you must be born again it's not just a general saying it is a command from God oh yeah we yeah. must be born again all of us must be born again yeah and like and as well in Acts we see P Peter saying repent and be trans repent and receive Jesus as Lord, be transformed by him. Yeah. And that was in Jerusalem. And Yeah, absolutely. So, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour, so walk in, in him. So what in does him. that mean, to walk in him? Well, we walk in him because we have been transformed and we have submitted into him the person of Jesus Christ into a relationship with him and we and um, we have put away our sin in repentance and we walk in his righteousness. We don't rest in our own works anymore or our own trying to be good and our own trying to our own effort. We are trusting in his righteousness because he is sinless. So and, yeah, so uh, just to give our uh, our viewers a little bit of history about this, this is uh, the area that is called Colossians in the Bible, but it's Colossae, right? Is that how you say it? It's Colossae, the area. Yeah, Col Colossae, I think it's. Uh, Colossae, or Colossae. Yeah, Col yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. in Turkey or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the area, and the and the writer is. Um, Paul, Paul, and he's addressing the churches 
all over all over Turkey and Asia. Yeah, yeah, and in particular, he's addressing the Colossian church. Yeah. And and why is he addressing the Colossian church? Well, he's addressing them because he wants them to be sure in their faith, and he wants them to instruct about practicalities of how to live in Christ. Yeah, and al believers. also Paul, uh, when he was uh, when he was uh, writing his letters and teaching to the Colossian believers, he knew his teachings, his previous teachings, had been instilled into their hearts and he knew that they had great faith but there was also at that same time there was a lot of uh, false religions yeah a lot of heresies a going lot of heresies and, going around and, yeah, false teaching and about so, jesus yeah. and all sorts of different things so paul wanted to make sure that the ones who believed in christ stuck to what is true what is proper doctrine? What, what is proper, proper teaching, doctrine? Yeah. And he didn't want them to be carried away by the the wiles and the fancies of the world, all these different doctrines that were coming around yeah. and all these different religions. So it's very important. Like when Eric was talking, he went into Manchester, he was talking to a couple of Muslim people and when they knew he had the knowledge of Christ and he knew about the Quran also, then he was able to refute what they were saying by instructing them with with the truth from the bible yeah. and when they heard that and when they heard that he was talking about christianity and and also islam and he knew what he was talking about then they stopped the conversation dead in its tracks because they wanted to continue embracing you know yeah their faith islam which isn't the truth and they they didn't want anything to do anything to do with christianity yeah, or true. christ mm -hmm. so paul is one in the colossians the the colossian church via letter and also you know from his past teachings that now now therefore that you've received jesus christ as your lord so walk in him and mm -hmm. so yeah. when you walk in him you're walking in him by all the experience you've had from the teachings Amen. and you're walking Amen. how you would imagine Christ walking. And yeah. so you, you try and mimic yeah. everything you've learned, you try and mimic, don't you? As well, because like in, in Acts, we're told that the first Christians were called so because they were followers of Christ. Yeah. And and in the Colossian church and, and, and a lot of the churches, there are a lot... Of, uh, because many of the first Christians were Jews. Yeah. And so a lot of other Jews, religious Jews, were coming in and trying to say, oh, you've got to keep the law as well as believe Christ, and you've got to be circumcised, you've got to be doing this, and you've got to be doing that, you've got to be keeping the Sabbath. But how is that? That was the Old Testament, right? Yeah. And that was the Jews. There were Jews first, Yeah. and then they became Christians, many of them. Yeah. Uh, many of them sadly are not. But how is that relevant to today? Because we're not in the Old Testament. We, no. I personally don't see many Jewish people where we no. live in Manchester. I know there are. Yeah. And there's a Jewish museum as well. We know that. Yeah. But I don't see many walking on the streets, Jewish people. You do in London. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. So well, how is that relevant? Is, is, yeah. is it relevant because of the other worldly religions? Is that the thing? I would it's, say so, yeah. Is that because, how we can apply it to our lives today? Yeah, because, um, I, I mean, I see it like this religion is very showy, it's very outward. And, and you know, we know that in the Gospels, Jesus addressed the Pharisees because they were very outward and showy and condemning people um, for sin because they so were the so, Pharisees, so righteous. Who, who were the Pharisees? The Pharisees were... Jewish leaders of the synagogue, right. and they the, were they were part of the they Sanhedrin. Had, they right? had the law, yeah. but they had added their own laws and their traditions, which they put above the law of Moses. And so they were they were condemning Jesus. They were condemning people who followed him, and they condemned him for keeping the uh, for breaking the Sabbath by doing miracles, which were obvious from God. Yeah, and yeah. they couldn't deny so, that, but they didn't like 
They were Jesus. very what we call legalistic. Yeah, legalistic. Uh, legalistic religion. in their religion, yeah. and they were very radicals, really. Would you yeah. call them radicals? Um, I wouldn't say they were radical. They were very more traditional. They were very steeped in uh, outward things like the washing of pots, the washing of the hands before they eat, and things like that. And they were and so, so were were they fanatical about that? The, I would say they were, yes, but they would be fanatical in the sense they had a great zeal for these I'm just traditions. trying to, I'm just yeah. trying to paint oh, a yeah, picture so that, you know, our friends who are with us right now, they can get an idea of what their mindset could have been like. Yeah. So what do you think it was like? Yeah, because like uh, there's a passage in, I think it's Mark 7, where where it talks about how the Pharisees washed their hands before eating and they were condemning Jesus because he didn't appear to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. And they said, you know, oh, we wash our pots and we wash our hands and we, we do these ceremonial washings and things. And the Pharisees were all about ceremony, about looking good, looking righteous, looking religious. Yeah, yeah. and then the Jewish and, people, they, when they wash their hands ceremonially, they use a two-handled cup and they pour water on yeah. on one hand and wash that. Then they take the cup with the other handle and they pour the water on their other hand. That's right. And yeah. they have to do that two or three times. And they and have to do that in a certain order, yeah. in a certain way. And um, you know, it, it's it's the same in other religions as well. Islam, they do that in their prayers. They have to do things in a certain way, say certain things, bow down and do things in a certain way yeah. and they recite prayers. They don't pray from the heart. They recite their traditional prayers. So, verse 7. Well, in fact, we, if we just read it all again, you read yeah, it from yeah. verse, it's only two verses. Yeah. So, 6 and 7. And um, So, 6. <coughs> As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And, you know, I think it's important that we have to walk in Christ. We have to live in in Christ, of what we know of him, and as we learn, as we read the Bible, we learn more and more about him, and we have to walk in the way he was, in his love. In his examples, his, right? In his example and his behaviour, but we have to speak the truth, and we have to speak the truth in love, and we have to... Uh, and we we are to, to live out the, his principles, right? Yeah, we live out his principles and his... Uh, and his standards, if we his, can. Yeah, his yeah. standards are very high as well. If you read, yeah. the, like, the Sermon on the Mount, he has very high standards. Well, he's a holy God, isn't he? Yeah, because he's holy. He's God, uh, and he is God in the flesh. Nobody can compare to his standards, nobody, but we have to no. do our very best. That's yeah. all he expects of us, to do our very yeah. best to live out... A good Christian lifestyle, right? Yes. And so it's not only about uh, belief, it's about the culture also, the yeah. culture of Christ, the relationship you have with Christ. What does verse 7 say? It says, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you've been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So that is expanding on verse 6, where it says, You've got to be. We've got to be rooted in the Word of God, in the person of Christ, and yeah. and in His character, in His behaviour, in our attitude towards others, and our attitude towards God as yeah, well. Yeah, so we'll just we'll we'll try and go break it down a little bit by little bit. Yeah. So that's a key word, rooted. So you can, if you want, you can underline that or make a note in a in a notepad. Uh, rooted, the, the word. Now, when you think about rooted, what does it remind you of? It reminds me of a tree. Right, okay. Roots very deep right. into the ground. Right, and it grows, so. And the roots get deeper and the tree gets taller. Right, so you've got the symbol symbolically of a tree, so it means to be rooted. And, and for a tree to be rooted, like Eric said, it's got to be rooted very deeply in the ground. It's got to have a firm foundation. Yeah. And, and what is that firm foundation for believers? The firm foundation is Christ himself. It's so we've got to be rooted, therefore, the word. into Christ Jesus, yeah. into who he is. And we can only do that by yeah. going deeper into his word, Amen, yeah. by prayer, by... Um, 
by reading the Bible, by studying um, his word, living and trusting in what he says. Yeah, and it's not works and by prayer also. It's about that deep personal relationship yeah. with yeah. Christ Jesus. Because prayer is our talking and our conversing with God and listening to him as well and reading his word because if we, we can't pray something that is outside of his word because that would contradict, you can't expect God to answer if you're going outside what he says. That's right. So rooted, Eric said, it, it reminds him of a tree where it has very deep roots. Now, you know, I've talked on some of my other videos. Uh, I did a teaching once, and, and in that teaching, I was talking about palm trees. Oh, yeah. Now, palm trees are normally on the beach, right? Yeah. But they have very, very deep roots. Yeah. And when a hurricane comes, then the wind will bash against them, and they will they will bend right over, almost in the U-shape. And when yeah. you walk by them, the day after the storm has gone by, they're still like that. Yeah. In a, in a upside down U shape, yeah. like somebody you know who's uh, some person who's bending down, touching his toes, that kind of thing. Yeah. And you look by looking at them, you'd think they were dead. Yeah. And they will never ever recover. But after a, a few weeks, because their roots are so deep, yeah, they spring back up to life and they. Stand yeah. there in all their glory, right? Yeah. So it's like they kind of submit to the weather conditions, yeah, yeah, and then rise, rise again. Yeah. They're not dead, they're given the illusion of dying, but they're not really. Uh, and another example of trees if you've ever go up on mountains and you see trees up on mountains, you think, How on earth can a tree grow on solid rock? Yeah. But it, its roots go deep in all the nooks and crannies of the the rock and when the mm. storms come even high up on the mountain then the wind blows and those trees blow and it's got to have those firm mm. roots and every time there's a storm and the wind blows and they get bashed the roots go deeper yeah, yeah. in the because rock it's still soil in between those rocks yeah yeah and, and it's anchored to the rock which is the firm foundation and we've got to have the firm foundation and be rooted very deeply in Christ Jesus so that when the storms of life come, when problems comes, when situations uh, happen in our life, when those suddenlies happen, then we, we can be resilient to them. We can, we can resist temptations, for example. Uh, when problems come or when scarcity comes, we know what to do. When, when other false religions come to our ears or our eyes, we can be bold in God's word, Amen. because we're studying his word, we, our roots are deep within Christ Jesus, we're walking the walk, we're talking the talk, and we can, we can say no, we can say no to these false religions, yeah. because our eyes have been opened, the scales have been removed, our ears, have, the stops have been removed, we've, been, we've had the revelation of Christ Jesus, the truth instilled in us, right. so we can say no to those false religions, and when they keep pushing like a storm, like the wind pushes against the tree with their f f uh, false fake doctrine, we can then come back like Eric did to those Muslims that he met. Very pleasant people as human beings, but, you know, it was about religion, wasn't it? Yeah. Light and dark. He was able to push back against the the well, wonky well, or uh, yeah, their own the, ideas yeah the perception what, what and, and deception yeah. or, of uh, their religion and that's all it is it's a religion and it's not the truth and there's mm. only one true living god and that is christ jesus Amen. and so we have to get and that I straight think, you know, i think it's important that you know uh, even though we are in christ the same storms come against us oh, as course. those in the world, you know. Yeah. It's, but it's our foundation that matters, that we are on the rock of Jesus Christ, his word. Um, otherwise, we're on, we're on sand, and when, when the sea comes in over the sand, all the, all the foundation wears away. If there's any foundation, it wears away, and the, the whole house falls down. That's right. And it said rooted and built up. So if you're rooted in Christ, then Christ will build you up. So when, mm. I, when I say the word built up, what comes to mind? Well, Jesus 
Christ, he is building his church and he is the one who builds and, and it's not about church buildings or this or that, it's about us. We are the church as believers in Christ and he is the one that builds us up regardless of what's going on in the world. Yeah, so like, like rooted, you, you saw the symbol in your mind's eye, you saw the symbol of a tree with deep roots, so the word built up or the words built up what do you see in your in your mind? It is like well, a building is made yeah. up of bricks. Tall building, bricks right? Are, yeah. The yeah. bricks are stones, and the Bible says that we are living stones, and He is building us up. And He is and, the cornerstone. Jesus yeah, Christ is the, Jesus Christ, the, the cornerstone, living cornerstone, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and we are to rest in Him. But Jesus Christ is our cornerstone, and we rest completely in him and he is the one that builds us up if we stay in his word and in prayer and trust in him and living the life in him he will build us up so what does it i mean when you say he will build us up how does he build us up he builds us up in our in our spirit our soul our mind our thinking and the way so he yeah. instills godly wisdom yeah right yeah and he and because we're walking or anchored to a firm foundation and then we will receive the blessings of god right, That's right so yeah. we're being built up we're being uh, provided for we're being healed by by god yeah. all these blessings that come from god because we are firmly rooted and god himself god almighty is building us up to be like strong towers amen uh, yeah. amen strong yeah. towers we we become a new creation in Christ, not the old self, the old ways of the world, but we are a new, stronger creation, and we are being built up day by day by the revelation of God's truth. Amen. 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 And we're becoming more and more shaped and fashioned. That's right. Like a tree, as it grows, it gets more branches come off it, more leaves, more fruit. And yeah. God wants us to be fruitful. Yeah, and so when we're being built up, we're being made stronger in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? So uh, it said, rooted and built up in him, not in ourselves, yeah. not in the works of ourselves or, the, or our own strength, but in him, in Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And what does yeah. the rest say? And established in the faith as you've been taught. So we, like Paul is teaching the Colossian church here, and he's, he's making them aware of their foundations in Christ and he's uh, showing how to be practical in our belief, in our, in our faith in, in God. Because remember that Paul once was a Pharisee. He was one of those religious leaders who was against the church. That's right. And he was transformed on the road to Damascus and he completely had his chain, uh, because he saw the resurrected Christ, he was completely transformed and then he began to preach that Jesus is the Christ which he was what he was against at first. Now I'm going to stop Eric right there and I, I want all of you to pay more attention and, and really focus on what he's saying and could I ask you again just to say what that means you, you read and established in the faith as you have been told well, can you just Emphasize that again because it is so important. Yeah, we are we are to be established in our faith. We have to know what we believe, why we believe it, and and the foundations of our the, of complete teaching yeah. and doctrine of everything that Jesus said and everything He represents as God, as Lord and our Savior. That we are we we know what we believe so that we can give an answer to anyone who asks us for our hope and for our reason for living and for our reason for preaching the gospel or giving the truth out. Yeah, but like, like maybe some of you, myself, I forget things very easily. Yeah. So how can I ensure that I will remember what Christ has done for me how can I make sure that I'm built up in, in, in Christ as this scripture is saying? What can I do that I can practically do to help myself to ensure that or guarantee 
that I, I'm, I'm getting closer to that goal. Amen. Well, I would say that, like, uh, say, for instance, you're thinking uh, something that you're doing in life and you can't, you know there's a scripture for it, but you can't remember what it is. Right. And we refresh ourselves going back to the Word and finding that scripture, asking God to guide us because the scripture is authored ultimately by the Holy Spirit through the different authors and they were all inspired and moved by God to what they wrote so we can trust his word and we can go back to it so we know exactly what God's teaching is about something and how to live our so lives. So what you're saying is it's about relationship with Christ. Yeah. We've got to be in relationship with Christ Amen. to ensure our walk is we're walking in the right direction. We've got to study his word. We've got to mm -hmm. communicate in prayer with Christ so that he can continue to build us up. You see, as human beings, we all have weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. We forget yeah. things. Yeah. We, we don't tend to forget things from 20 years ago, but two days ago yeah. we forget, right? We forget what I did so yesterday. So that's why relationship with Christ and uh, that deep personal relationship is so very important amen yeah. and so that, that way uh, you, you know we're rooted and built up in him and established what does the word established mean oh, to you established means it's like is is like it, that is your foundation being established like well, says, when, when you see on buildings and you say uh, this company was established in such and such a year yeah, yeah. and you know that's when they started um becoming you know whatever they are well that brings back uh, when we went to nasborough and uh, uh Arrigo on one of these uh, on a sweet shop and a they had afternoon tea cafe upstairs it said on the front established in 1720. oh yeah so yeah that was when it first started right yeah. and so we are established in our faith and yeah. that goes back to the yeah. fact before the foundations of the yeah. world right yeah, yeah. And uh, so we, you know, and the word, you know, established. We are established in faith in in His word because. Uh, yeah, but how the next words? Just read the next five words after that. Yeah, as you have been taught. Okay, so we get established by being taught. 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 And how do we get taught by studying by God's person. holy word? Amen. Yeah. By reading scripture and reminding ourselves again and again, again and over and again it, you know. and again yeah. every day, yeah. right? So we've got to have that relationship with Christ and he will speak to us through his word. That's why it's very important that we do study his word yeah. on a regular basis. Now, if you can't do it every day, then you can do it on a regular basis, which suits you. Know, yeah, we you. Have, like you can get reading plans, can't you? And uh, like I'm going through the chronological Bible, yeah, same here. and I'm reading it yeah. uh, uh, day by day, and I'm reading like two, three chapters a day. And every time I go through the reading plan, I'm re I know it better. Yeah, and, exactly. You know. So you know, whatever schedule you have you can fit in a small amount of scripture each and every day. And if you say, well, I'm too busy to do that. Well, you know, you sit down every day to have your breakfast, your lunch and yeah. your dinner and some people even suffer, right? Yeah, of course, so if you've yeah. got time to do that, to eat for your flesh, yeah. for your physical bodies, then you need to be in the word to eat the spiritual food Amen. of God because the scripture is life. It's Amen. the way to life, right? Yeah. It's the way to Christ. Yeah. Amen. So we we must spend some time, even if it's just on a coffee break, you know, having a coffee, having the cake, getting into the Word a few minutes in your own private time, in your own private space, and giving God the honour and the glory He deserves, and only He deserves that. Like Jesus said, uh, my word is spirit and it is life. So we are to feed ourselves as much as we feed our flesh, if not more. Yeah, absolutely. And once we've done all that, it says abounding in it with thanksgiving. Why would we give thanks? Because we are enjoying being refreshed and blessed and learning more and, and living more 
for him. And we built and, up and, and we're yeah, rooted deeply. Because God blesses us. And the more we are in him, the more God blesses us, the more God protects us, the more God provides, uh, for, us, provides for us and just heals us. us and establishes us people, uh, true men and women of God who, can, who uh, have a firm foundation. So we thank God for everything, every opportunity, every blessing, even every um, circumstance that comes against us because it's a test and it's also a trial and trials are good for us because they also strengthen our faith in him yes absolutely rooted means to gives you the idea the picture in your mind of a tree with deep roots and then being built up is like symbolically like a building being built up we've been strengthened by the word we've been strengthened by god almighty himself because he is caring for us and we have become established we are we we become uh, firmly fixed in christ the solid foundation Amen. the solid rock of christ jesus and then we receive all the blessings because as we grow as we grow in our faith and our walk with christ jesus we see things and react differently and become more christ-like and so we're living a different life Amen. we're living the life that god wants us to live little by little every day we're being built up and mm -hmm. little by little god uh, blesses us with this and with that and yes. he provides for all of our daily needs we go deeper in christ jesus our roots go deeper like the trees on the mountains they go deeper into the solid rock which is christ jesus amen and we amen. become established and like a tree, you said earlier, what yeah. did you say? It produces um, fruit. You have more branches. More branches. And um, leaves. Leaves and fruit. And, um, and it's growing all the time. Yeah, and it's growing and it's changing all the time. Yeah. It's being transformed, isn't it? It's life yeah. is being shaped. Well, when you're deep-rooted in and established in Christ Jesus... He is transforming you. The Holy Spirit who indwells in you is instilling God's wisdom and transforming us from one form of glory to mm. another. And another so, thing about a tree is that when, uh, when people say take its fruit off there, it grows more fruit. Yeah. And people, it is an advantage to the world yeah, the that we are bearing fruit and that we are growing. Yeah, and those and, fruits are, are, are character yeah uh, our spirit man growing they, they could be fruits of giving and and fruits of love all the fruits of righteousness and, right. and the leaves on on the tree like in the garden of eden the the leaves are for the healing yeah, so you healing. get all the yeah. different things coming from that yeah. and and when you picture that building being built up that is you being made stronger in christ jesus through the firm foundation of God's holy word. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that we won't be, we won't be uh, confused when another false religion uh, comes along your way or you hear this or you hear that. You won't be confused. You'll be able to stand strong and you'll be able to refute yeah. uh, a false religion. You won't follow after the world the things of the world are, are the false religions because you're stronger yeah, yeah. and being built up and firmly rooted in Christ Jesus. I mean, like, there's one scripture that people uh, misquote a lot in the world and they'll say, money is the root of evil. But the Bible says the love of money yeah. is the root of evil. Nothing wrong with money, but it's the love of money and that's what drags people away and things. yeah yeah and it's uh but when yeah, you but we should know uh, but when someone says something there like that that's like a false religion or a cult which is twisting the word whether deliberately or out of ignorance but we can correct when we know our word and we know yeah oh that sounds right and that no that's not quite right because we know the word and we should we should know it yeah so a little difference somebody says the root of all uh, the uh, the root of money is it is the root of 
evil. Uh, uh, sorry, the root of it. Money is the root of evil. That's it. Money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil, but the love of it, making, making money a god, yeah. a, a false idol, that is the sin. Amen. Yeah, and so right. it, by being in God's word, by communing in prayer with God, by spending time listening to what God's got to say, we can make sure that we get established in our faith with the correct doctrine, with the correct teachings, yeah. and then we won't be taken off the path of Christ by these false religions or, or by just, these... just error. Or, or, or by error, error yeah. yeah. So it's good that we have these teachings and then we can say, thank you, Lord, praise mm -hmm. you, Lord, mm -hmm. for everything that he does because the Lord Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we must understand that. We can only understand that by searching out his word. He and speaks being, to yeah. us through his word. He speaks to us in our hearts. It's, you know, he speaks to us audibly as well. He's yeah. an all-knowing, all-seeing God in all places at all times. He knows everything. Amen. Amen. And that's how we are in him and established in him and built up in him by resting in his truth and his word because he is truth. And any other so-called truth is a deviation and a, and a perversion of truth. But we can stand on this word yeah. as the truth, as our foundation in life. And I like to call the Bible the terms and conditions of life. It's a manual for believers. Yeah. It's not written for unbelievers. Well, you know, like when you get a new television or a yeah. new computer or a new anything, it always comes with an instruction book. And what do we normally do? Throw away the instruction <laughs> yeah. book, right? But, you know, we should be studying it to yeah. find out the fine details, what God, yeah. what wonderful plans and purposes Amen. God has got for us. But like if you get a television and you, you're messing about with it and you do something wrong because you haven't re read the terms and conditions, you could blow it up, you could yeah. have a cause a fault to it so it never works properly. That's correct, that's right. Capacitor. Yeah. So remember, I'm going to read the scripture to you one more time. And that's Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And it says, As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Amen. Amen. Rooted and built up in him. Not in yourselves, not in your own works, but rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith as you have been taught. Amen. And then... And abounding in it with thanksgiving. So important to say thank Amen. you to God. Take the time to thank God for all of his blessings. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a wonderful teaching, wasn't yeah, it? Well, yeah, yeah. Very short, but when you go deeper with Christ Jesus, then you'll, you'll see more blessings and more miracles happen in well, and through your life. Two verses there. And there's so much in there that we could look at. And we could have probably gone on for another half an hour. Or yeah. Just they're they're probably saying, words. thank the Lord that they didn't. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you get so excited when you get in God's word. Two verses, two simple verses, but very profound, very powerful, very life-impacting verses. And uh, I just want to thank you. My name is Pastor Gareth Lavelle, and this is Eric. Splodge. Splodge Apologetics. Splodge Apologetics, that's his YouTube channel. Uh, I want to thank you. We want to thank you for spending time in God's Word. Mm -hmm. It's a great honour to and a privilege to spend time in God's Word. Some countries, it's illegal to spend mm -hmm. time in God's Word. We've got the freedom in the UK to uh, research God's Word, to mm -hmm. study His Word, to meditate upon His Word. We've got freedom to pray and we've also got freedom to commune with God and allow him to shape our lives so thank you so much mm -hmm. for spending time with us in fellowship here on Cloud Church TV and thank you so much for spending time in God's word mm -hmm. and the more you do that and the more time you spend with God the more of God's wonderful blessings will come showered into your life like now it's raining outside you can't see that but it's raining here in the uk yeah. and that's a daily occurrence but yeah. the rains are coming down but like god's blessings will come down 
and they will come into your life and through your life so that you can be a blessing to other people. Yeah. Well, God bless you. And, uh, yeah. yeah, we could... I, I really like... It. Well, sometimes we don't like the rain, but the rain is good for the trees and it helps them be built up as well. So, And when you're, yeah, in, when, when you're in Christ me. Jesus, the mountain, let's say the mountain is God, right? Yeah. You can be at the bottom, the middle or the top. When God's blessings rain down, pour down, everybody on the mountain, no matter what level they're at, if they're in the valley, they're a, a little bit up in the middle or the top, they're all going to get wet. They're yeah. going to get wet with the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. So when you walk with God and you're firmly rooted, uh, he will build you up and you'll be established. And then you'll have lots of reasons to say, thank you, God. And on Amen. that note, let us pray Amen. and say thank you to God. Would you join us in prayer as we close this session in prayer? Amen. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. Bless your name. We thank we, you, Yes, God, we, we just say thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for this wonderful Bible study. Amen. Thank you for thank the you, fellowship. Bless each and every person truth, who's Lord, been watching this video and, and really help them to be firmly established in you, in your, your word, Father God. And Father, help them their roots to go deeper in you and Build them up, Father, because you are not Amen. a God that tears down. You're not a God that looks down upon them. You're a builder, Amen. Father God. Amen. And you build everybody up, Father God, for your glory. And we praise you and we thank you for that in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, would you like to say goodbye? Yeah. Well, thanks for watching us and uh, we hope to see you again soon as we get together into God's Word. And uh, yeah, okay. let's all go deeper in God's Word and God bless you all and bye for now. Bye bye. 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 subscribe please do subscribe to this channel it will help us immensely to get the word of god out to the nations